Our next speaker is Nicka Callahan, and he's a teacher from Henry Box Secondary School in Oxfordshire. Um, he's much more than a teacher. He was a student at Reichert Wood and ma has managed consistent success in the extension of the Make It competition. His students have won Best Student, and he sets the sander for teaching in, in that regard. So it'd be good to hear from Nick about how we engage with him. That's my usual lunch hour at school. <laughs> um, you've got kids there from, age, uh, from year seven to age 11 up to um, year 11, age 16. Um, to be honest, I don't, don't mind what they're doing in there, as long as they're making something, as long as they're doing something, not setting themselves on fire. And I think if they leave the room with ten fingers, I'm quite happy, to be honest. <laughs> in fact, at one uh, year seven lesson, I was teaching them how to use a scroll saw, and at the end of the lesson, I said, everybody who's used a saw, put your hands up like that. And they all did that. I said, oh, I think that's been a successful lesson, you've all got your fingers. My little boy said, you can't judge a lesson on that, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see why not. Um, I started teaching about 13 years ago. Um, and when I went into teaching, there was incentives to get uh, more and more people to teach design technology, because uh, there was a big shortage of, uh, of, of staff. These old school um, bearded tech teachers, these are ex carpenters, ex uh, engineers, all coming into the age of retirement, so they needed more and more uh, people into the um, teaching design technology. Uh, I'm afraid nowadays the picture is a lot more bleaker um, because there's a massive drive for, for literacy and numeracy um, it's, it's diverting the resources from our subject and put towards um, maths, maths and English dare I say and I actually interviewed a lot of our students um, and I asked them all the same thing and the, the question to them was was what did you make at primary school and most of the answers was nothing. And it broke my heart. It really did, it broke my heart. I always made stuff from, from day dot, really. Um, and I think there was one primary school which it, they had a kitchen which the kids could go into, so they made cookies and fruit salad. Um, and the only schools that did anything was the schools who worked with us on an engineering project um, called Green Power. So I, I, went, I went back to the, to the primary schools and I, I spoke to the, um, to the head teachers and I, I said, what are you doing about design technology? Now my local um, primary school hates the sight of me because I'm always quizzing her. I'm always trying to get them to do more d &T, more metal work, more woodwork. Um, and I said, why? Why, um, why aren't you doing more about it? And basically the answer was that they're afraid of tools and materials. And this, this fear comes from a, a lack of knowledge of, um, of the tools and materials. And, um, there's, a, there's no skills really in primary school, so they don't feel comfortable delivering it. Now, this has a knock on effect to secondary school because our, our basic level projects, our basic level, say, tests, are getting more and more basic. Now, if, if the input's really, really low, you can do what we can, we're only human, the output's going to get lower and lower and lower. And, I, and I'm afraid the secondary schools don't seem to be addressing the skills gap at all. In fact, there's, they're diverting our funds and our teaching time towards the teaching of, of literacy and numeracy. Um, but we don't want to lose, we don't want to lose the, uh, the, the practical aspect of design technology. We don't want to turn into cardboard technology, as I keep on telling my boss. So we've got to look at different ways of making sure our kids have still got a hands-on experience with wood, metal and plastic. Um, and we don't turn into cardboard technology. Um, which is something the Make It uh, project is really, really good for. Um, now we've been doing this for, for about uh, four years and we've entered students uh, from years nine and 12. Uh, and what it does, it helps to teach them about working towards a brief, a real brief. Um, if, their, if their work isn't, isn't right, it's gonna be tested. And in fact, um, one year I brought my kids in to test their work. Luckily, none of it broke, none of it collapsed, and my little boy was all right. Um, but they get, yeah, they get to research, they get to design, they get to make, and what the brief we give them is a stool for a primary school, a seat for a primary school child. Um, and it has been quite successful. What's quite interesting is I thought, where are they now? What to do a little, could be a TV program, couldn't it? Where are they now? Um, so this year, uh, they're still doing their GCSE. Uh, this year we, we, we did a, a project where we got kids to use eco-friendly materials 
basically stuff we could find in a skip, um, or stuff we can we could beg off of uh, manufacturers, people like you guys, um, or people who are fed up of us ringing them. Um, and they done like a, a mini company. They made these products. They designed them. They made them. They sold them at our annual Christmas fair, um, and they raised enough money for us to to buy a new bobbin sander. Um, but that was a really good incentive. And Chris in the middle, he's, he was only 11 and a half, and he was the youngest recipient of the Make It Award. The year before that, um, they're just finishing off their GCSEs, they're hassling me, they're, they're most lunch times hassling me. Um, our two A-level students are now doing engineering, essentially of engineering. Fraser is, is working on the railways, um, and Toby is doing an engineering degree. The year before that, these were year nines in the photo. Um, most of them are, are still with me doing A-level product design. Um, one of them is hassling me about doing a solid oak table. He doesn't understand that oak is expensive. <laughs> um, and Chris at the top, he's working in Bista uh, doing motorsport engineering. Um, and the first year we entered it, they're all doing a variety of different things. Rosie is good doing an engineering degree next year. Um, she actually helps me out once a week in my, one of my classes. Um, and Rob at the top, he's actually studying furniture design at OCVC. He will openly admit that if it wasn't for the Make It initiative, he would not have got into furniture design. He would not have got into furniture design. Um, but he seems to be loving it. I speak to him every year, he seems to be loving it. If you look, there's a lot of people going into engineering. Now, that's because in schools there's been a bit of a, an engineering dr drive. There's a, lots of initiatives. These are just some of them. Um, there's lots of initiatives to get kids into engineering. Now the reason I put these ones up, because we've partook, partook in, in these, um, these sort of incentives. Now with Green Power, Green Power, they <coughs> design, make and race a go-kart. It's absolutely brilliant. And they race it around uh, race circuits with Formula Schools. The final of that is at Silverstone, where they get a really controlled car and they race it around the track. And F1 in schools, the finals of that is at the Autosport Show, where there's lots of colleges and, and places all of which are very, very stressful for the teacher and I lose lots of sleep and almost get divorced every year. <laughs> it's true, it's so true. Now, but I think we can, we can learn um, a lot about those initiatives and think um, what, can we, what can be done. I, I shouldn't have put that there. What can be done? It doesn't make sense. What can we do? Um, the first thing I think is really, really important is how past how subject regain its identity because I think we're losing our identity. We don't seem to be in primary schools anymore. If you hear the rumours of our West Oxfordshire Learning Partnership, where we all get together and have a good moan about the government, textiles is disappearing and we seem to be turning it into product design and engineering. We possibly could be losing hand skills, but these are just rumours. So we need to get our identity back. We need people to, to, who are up there to talk about us. We need to raise the profile of um, the initiatives such as the Make It programme. Um, we need to create incentives for schools to celebrate pupils' work at every level. I have got in my workshop possibly about a, a thousand photos of pupils' work, which I've stuck all around the room. The reason I stuck them around the room is because just think how many photos you take and what do you do with them? Are they still on your phone? Or are they in your photo album? So I put them all around my room. And when kids are stuck with what to do, I tell them to get up and walk around and see what people have done. Now brainstorming this in our office, we come up with an idea that could potentially work. Have something like a national schools exhibition. Somewhere in an in exhibition hall where schools are invited to bring along their students' best work. Now if you think, if you're that student, you've just been invited to the national schools exhibition. You go along, you take your best mate with you, you take your family with you. At this National Schools Exhibition, there's other schools, you can see what they're doing, you can steal tricks off them. But also there could be colleges, there could be employers there. You could get in early and um, try and poach these students. You could even have awards, you could have pe uh, Best in Show, sponsored by Crufts, something like that. And the, the, the last one for me, which is one I'm quite passionate about, because I've got two primary school children, is skills for primary schools. Is there an opportunity there for an outside agency to, to go into primary schools to deliver design technology or deliver hand skills at primary school level? The, like I said before, the head teachers I spoke to, they're, they're afraid of using swords, they're afraid of using hammers. 
Could, is there something we could do to get into primary schools? Right, before I go, it wouldn't be right if I didn't set you some homework. Okay. So it's due in whenever you want it to be due in. It's the first question I get asked, when's it due? Right, I want you to ask your friends, your family, the people you work with, some random on the street, what did you make at school? Because not only will they tell you what they made, they'll tell you the story behind it. If we're not careful, if, we, if this skills gap gets bigger, we're going to lose these stories. Thank you for listening.